Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be playing ranked games until we either rank up or uh, lose a match, whichever comes first. The main takeaway to this video is the importance of macro decision making and micro decision making. Macro is your grand strategy decisions. The, dis the cards you decide to keep in your hand to, to come ultimately defeat your opponent. It might be giant spotters that you play on the board, a grave hag, a lacerate to remove the grave hag before it goes off, or a shroom or a scorch to remove the spotters. These kind of things are your macro decisions, and you've got to think about those when you're envisioning winning a game. You can't just be stuck in your, what card am I playing now? Because then you're not... You're not going to be prepared for round three. Micro decisions, on the other hand, focus on your time, like where you're playing a card or where you put the points. It's these small decisions you make that add up eventually. Sometimes they're extremely impactful, like by making a wrong unit placement, you put made yourself exposed to a Geralt Igni that you could have avoided, or you didn't manage the points on your board effectively and now your opponent's passed and you're going to have to play two cards to catch up to their points if you wanted to win the round shutting you up shutting you out the reason why i took this deck in particular is because it combines so many parts of the scoytel faction that it has several significant macro decisions you can make regardless of what hand you have. And be lots of micro decisions have to be made because you're using the movement playstyle, which is high tempo, but can affect how a Geralt Igni or something can hit you. We're going to see in the upcoming ranked games that I play how I manage my points Sometimes effectively and sometimes not so effectively and it costs me dearly <laughs> Or could have cost me if my opponent had the right card So without further ado, we're going to begin the first match Our first game is up against Enya. You can't really tell what Enya is going to do because she's kind of a wild card right now. She could be Dwarf, she could be Ambush, she could also be Spell Scoyotel. Can't tell until they do something. <laughs> I open up with Dragoon, thinking, hoping it's Dwarf. The Shiru, though, is indicating that it's probably Spell Scoyotel. However, if it's still Dwarf, I'm going to pull out the Morin. I make a mistake here and play Dragoon. I could have just played an Elven Mercenary and saved myself the problem. Since the Elven Mercenary is kind of protected against this. I kind of take a risk here and I could have... This would be really bad if my opponents had a last raid. Instead, they're still playing Skellige Storm. I think my opponent just hasn't updated their deck very much from what it was during the open beta. Fortunately, the Skellige Storm weakens my Sheldon's gag, so he can't just scorch uh, both the Sheldon and the <laughs> uh, Yaven together. I kind of make a misplay here. I could have just passed. I was already 39 points ahead of my opponent. I did not need to tempo out my opponent here. Because I'm behind in card advantage, I really just want to just pass here. Force my opponent to play more cards. My opponent decides to play a Saskia, which surprises me. But they probably don't have any other units anyways. If they didn't have Saskia in their hand, they would have uh, had to use their, like, their leader ability or something, and that would have been really bad. I'm really surprised by the first light use. 
I already have a macro strategy in mind at this point. I'm going to keep my leader ability and the Scorch I get from Shiro until the last moment so that I can kill off his last Dothbana protector. I get my Scorch ready. I'm not going to need a last raid against this opponent because they're not going to have any units on the board other than the Dothbana protectors. One of the nice things about this setup is that I'm kind of protected against epidemics. I can't really play either of my other six strength units because I wrongfully buffed Teruvial instead of one of them. Now I'm kind of vulnerable to Scorches. Here, my opponent decides to play a Skellige Storm, I think. It's really effective now that I have three Siege units. That he, he's really getting value hitting right here. This placement of Ithleen is problematic. You don't want to put Ithleen in a Skellige Storm because you can use it as a shield against Skellige Storm. But I already have two units there, so it's not going to be that impactful. In the grand scheme of things. The, the, this use of Ithleen also tells me that he has all the Dothbana protectors in his hand. Here I'm going to use my leader ability to, as a shield for my Hawker support and I'm going to restore the health of my Dragoon. Yes. And here, uh, even if my opponent, if I didn't have the Scorch, I'd probably still win if I had like a Bran or something, or Azur's Double Cross. So I win my first game. Saving my Scorch till last was my macro decision that won me the game, and it's, it's something that this deck is capable of doing because it can counter value while still pushing lots of value. Our next game is up against a Reveal deck. A Reveal has a couple counters to this deck because they can um, affect cards in my hand with Serret. They also can tell what Ambush card I put down on the board if they reveal it in my hand, which is actually what's problematic about the fact that I have Morin. Arguably, I should be playing the Morin earlier rather than later, but it didn't quite work out that way. I played my Sheldon Skaggs. Arguably, I should be playing my Dragoons early here, here, but I want to try to do the uh, Bamboozle. Because all I need is Isengrim and Teruvial to do that. If my opponent has Ox now, I am... <laughs> I'm going to be upset, but that also means that my Dragoons are safe from getting locked themselves. Yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm upset about it, but I'm, I'll live. If I had played the Morin down, they, uh, my opponent might not know that Morin triggers before Ox does, but if they know they can lock Ambush cards, then they probably know that Morin pops first. Okay, Letho uh, maybe is a sign that they have Dimeridium Bomb. That was a pretty strong uh, Leo Bonhart. I decided against the um, Lacerate, seeing that the uh, Shrooms were at, was actually more powerful, but it also, using Shrooms, gives me access to the Shrooms later through Enya. Seeing Serret actually scares me a lot. <laughs> I'm going to use the last rate finally. Because it gives me a lot of tempo. I'm happy to see Bran. I, because I want card advantage, I'm going to just pass here. Seeing the manga now go is a happy sight. 
I'm really happy to see the Shiru. Shiru is going to be my macro decision to win the game. Sometimes I don't know what my macro decision is going to be until I get access to it. I'm, at, I'm still afraid of the... Uh, <laughs> of the Serret, but since I don't see Serret anymore, I'm not... I don't have to worry anymore. I got a Scorch, I can get rid of the two spotters, my opponent knows that, and surrenders. My next game is up against Consume. Against Consume, I really am really happy to see the Lacerate. Kind of standard opening play with the uh, <sighs> eggs, but the Triss Butterfly actually um, throws me off. I have not seen a deck like this. And the Becker's Twisted Mirror, really effective in this current meta. Uh, because you're going to be having all those dwarf decks and stealing those points with Becker's Twisted Mirror is a better succubus in many ways. I take a risk here, assuming my opponent does not have a Geralt Igni. I feel excited for a moment, and then I feel really scared because... Yeah. Uh, I was thinking that he had a Geralt Igni through Gales. It ended up being the old spear tip. There you go. You might be wondering why I am playing this out. That's because I'm taking like three points into my hand every with every card played. And any point that lands on Bran is worth double points. So I'm not really afraid of losing card advantage. I go with the first like just to remove as many of the <laughs> bronze cards off the top of my deck as I can. I'd rather that than accidentally pull a Morin. I'm gonna just pass here to regain some of my card advantage, uh, well, restore the card disadvantage that I just created. My opponent plays an Akimara. It actually makes me quite happy that I got that Akimara out now, as opposed to earlier. The last rate's actually a welcome sight. So I made a mistake here. I should have put Shiru into the melee row. I can't put him into the siege row because my hawker support's too big, and I can't put him into the range row because my brand is too big. I can put Isengrim. I could have put Isengrim and Shiru into the same lane. I'm in safe there. Now my opponent makes a bigger mistake, in my opinion, and did not understand that this could not have been Truvial. Truvial's been played, and Sapper is like. Like, who plays that? Not very many people play Sapper. Always assume that the face down ambush card is Morin until you have evidence that it can't be. Like, in the previous game, my opponent knew Morin was in my hand, so it couldn't have been Morin. This player had no reason not playing the Griffin that they just played or something else to take the hit from Morin. My brand strategy here is to kill off the Grave Hag when it appears, if I get the chance. If I don't, I'll just kill whatever the biggest unit is with my Bran and win that way. It'll be a close game. I kill off the bear. This means my uh, brand was effectively 26 points. It's huge. Uh, unfortunately, my opponent only had an Ekumara, and I win the game. If it was a Grave Hag, I probably sh would have lost. Luckily, killing the Giant Toad probably uh, stopped them <laughs> from doing that. Okay, my next opponent is an Enya player. 
Against Enya, you, you, like always, you just don't know what you're up against. So until I see my opponent's first card, I don't know exactly how I want to play against them. I'm going to go assuming it's a dwarf deck. My opponent's first card confirms that. I play down more and just in case they play a Barkley Elves or a Marching Orders or something like that. The deck that I'm up against looks a lot like the one I was running. They correctly play around Morin. You always assume that the face down card is Morin, regardless. I make a little bit of a mistake here putting a Scorching, uh, playing Shiru. Uh, Shiru's an elf, so it's going to mess up my Bamboozle early, later. The Scorch is because I need Scorch as a counter to the Dwarf deck. Now, Illyrian comes onto the board because I have five elves on the board. Again, gold cards count towards Illyrian. You gotta keep that in mind. I'm gonna deck thin a little bit. Right here. I should have lacerated. That was another option, but I didn't. I do some math in my head, and I realize that my opponent only has 77 points with the Commander's Horn, and Commander's Horn is one of the highest tempo plays they can make aside from using their leader ability, and they don't want to use a leader ability until after they use Commander's Horn. So I actually have 78 points on the board, as the math I showed you earlier demonstrates, and I, my opponent gives up after realizing they lost a round and now don't have card advantage. So I didn't get to record this entire match right here, so you're coming out to the second round. So <laughs> the opponent was using a movement, like everything, Skoytel deck. It surprised me a lot but I have like a giant brand in my hand I'm gonna win there's no way around it my opponent forfeits and that's another win sorry about that sometimes I don't record the whole thing our next match is against a consume player like there's no way you're not a consume player when you're playing unseen elder Open up with my Blue Mountain Commandos. I, I wanted to play the Morin as if it was Truvial to see if I could bait out a uh, Fiend. So here I'm going to play Truvial. I'm going to go for the Bamboozle. Here I just pass. I have a 26 point advantage on the board. There's no real reason to play this out. Even if he uses the leader ability, that's not enough points. So he thinks he's safe with a Bran. I don't know why. Even if Illyrian didn't pop out on the board, I would have still won. Uh, one of the things that you can take advantage of players is the fact that a lot of them aren't willing to do any math. So we're just going to open up with all the Dragoons here when I get the chance. But the reason why I moved to the Elven Mercenary is that I want to get a Shrooms so that I can counter the Neckers. It's part of my grand strategy and a macro just... One of my macro plays is having access to Shrooms as a counter card to the Neckers. Unfortunately, I didn't get it with either of the Elven Mercenaries. I know I only have one more bronze card in my deck, so playing the first light guarantees me to get the Shrooms. And I clear off the Necker. Now, I'm just going to keep playing this with the Dragoons. I don't really mind. The longer this round goes on, the better it is for me. Now I'm kind of contemplating between using Zoltan or another Dragoon. I'm afraid of uh, <laughs> a, a Scorch, but I actually throw myself into a worse scenario. I'm going to slow it down here. I'm going to talk about it. Moving that Dragoon into this row was a mistake. If my opponent had Igni, they could eliminate it. and. If I had a choice, you're always going to move the card that doesn't have an active effect on it. 
like that hawker support thing. So since the hawker support doesn't have an active effect, if my opponent were to scorch that row, I would have been better off. Okay, my opponent gets another Necker. I'm not too afraid of that. My Dragoon's already too strong for uh, my side of the board. So if my opponent uses an Igni on it, and then it's going to die. Okay, my opponent uses a lot of cards to uh, buff up his Necker again. Surprised he didn't eat the Necker. Given that the fact that if he had, he would have had eight more points on the board. Okay. Fortunately for me, I'm pretty sure I can't lose, so I'm going to take advantage of that and use my brand. Since I only had one more unit in my deck, brand was guaranteed to kill off the Grave Hag. Part of that grand strategy, knowing that the Grave Hag was their win condition, getting rid of the Grave Hag with removal, having re ac guaranteed access to that removal was important. This is our final. This game could be the game where I hit another rank up. I have a six game winning streak, as you can see at the top. I have three wins against Skoytel. Uh, I know I'm up against dwarfs. My opponent does not play against around Morin. Again, always assume it's Morin. If it's not Morin, you don't, and you play around it, you didn't really get hurt by it. Okay. I'm gonna set up the bamboozle. And I pass. I win the round. I think I would have still won the round even if the bamboozle didn't go off. Well, this is actually unfortunate I pulled into Saskia, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a bunch of dragoons on the board. I'm gonna empty my I'm gonna just play out this round as long as possible. Even if it means playing Saskia, because Every point that goes on to my brand is like worth double points here. It's lucky that one of the Dragoons is at 7 strength. Because it uh, unevened the row, but now I <laughs> moved too many things into the melee row. I'm actually scared for a uh, Igni. <laughs> the randomness of Sheldon Skaggs is sometimes bothersome. I move them out of that and take them out of Igni range. Let Sheldon Skaggs take the hit if Igni is dying to happen. The thing about dwarf decks is they don't run Igni. They have two, they're too full of slots because they have to pull a Saskia and they have all these other things. Okay, here I make a mistake. I see that he has two adjacent resilient units. I could have hit the one that isn't adjacent to any other resilient units because he's probably going to buff one. If he's gonna buff any cards, he's gonna buff the ones that are adjacent, not the one that's alone by itself. I would have uh, saved more points had I saved my uh, shrooms for when he had buffed up his Yarpen with uh, Ithleen. Fortunately, I kill off Yarpen and I have a 28 point advantage against a dwarf deck that was spamming buffs all game and I rank up it says rank 15 but I'm not really rank 15 it was uh I got desynced in that short game I hope you guys enjoyed that remember <sighs> I didn't get the scorch but I had the shrooms and I was able to remove a lot of points there and then I had another grand strategy of using Bran or Bran is one of the strongest cards in the game and it's better than Grave Hag I don't know why people don't run Bran more often well have a good day everybody I hope you guys like the video